heart to love. Open your heart to love. Then you will know what dreams are made of. Open your heart to love. Let your walls come crashing down. You'll find blessings all around. Don't look out, just look within. For you, a new world will begin. So open your heart to love. Open your heart to love. Then you will know what dreams are made of. Open your heart to love. Good morning and welcome to Unity Church of El Cajon. My name is Robert Bright. I'm the pastor here. And it's such an honor and a joy to welcome you into our church home on this Sunday morning. This is the weekend that we celebrate the life and the legacy of uh, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., it's a weekend that we, we focus on ideas of justice and love. And we are so grateful for Dr. King's legacy and for his life and for his work. So today, join me in prayer as we open our service. Loving God, thank you for your presence that is always with us. Thank you for this time and place in our lives. We thank you for the life and the legacy of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We thank you for all that he taught us and led us through and how the work continues. And it continues in our hearts and in our minds because it comes through you. We claim that, dear God, in the service right here, right now. In the name and in the nature of the living Christ, we say, Amen. Reach out to your fellow man Always lend a helping hand The greatest thing that you can do Is give love and receive it too So open your heart to love Open your heart to love then you will know what dreams are made of. Open your heart to love. Open your heart. Open your heart. Open your heart to This is our time of blessing as we light a candle for those who have come before us, as we remember Martin Luther King and all of the people who put the many ahead of themselves. We bless them. We bless today. We bless every person on the path right now who is bringing justice to our world. We give thanks for the vision that we hold, that we are we, that we are love, that we are peace, that we are whole. And we bless the future, the future that we are creating, that we are seeding, that we are watching blossom, that will come from all that we are today. How many roads must a man walk down before you call him a man and how many seas 
a muster white dove sail before she sleeps in the sand and how many times must the cannonballs fly before they're forever bare the answer my friend blowing in the wind the answer is blowing in the wind and how many years can a and exist before it's washed to the sea and how many years can some people exist before they're allowed to be free Yes, and how many times can a man turn his head and pretend that he just doesn't see? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the Tears and fears and feeling proud To say I love you right out loud Dreams and schemes and circus crowds I've looked at life that way But now, old friends, they're acting strange They shake their heads, they say I've changed Well, something's lost, but something's gained In living life that way I've looked at life from both sides now From win and lose and still somehow It's life's illusions I recall I really don't know times must a man look up before he can see the sky and how many years must one man have before he can hear people cry 
Guess and how many deaths will it take till he knows that too many people have died? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind The answer my friend is blowing in the wind The answer is blowing in the wind Thank you, Jody. That was beautiful. <clears throat> Our reading today is from the Daily Word. It's especially appropriate. Our word is oneness. And this is from the Daily Word that came out on March 25th, 1982. Our affirmation, I am one with God and one with all mankind. I am one with God and one with all mankind. I feel my oneness with all people everywhere, those who are a part of my immediate environment and those who are far away in distant lands. I accept all people as they are. I respect their beliefs their points of view, our customs and our approach to life's problems may be different, but we are all one with God. We may have different frames of reference, different backgrounds, different motives, but we are all growing. We are all seeking. We are all trying in our own way to express the good. We are all creations of the same divine creator. Peace and goodwill will begin with me. Peace in my world depends on me. I am peaceful and I attract peace. I am loving and I attract love. I am respectful and I attract respect. I am one with God and one with all mankind. I truly love and appreciate all people. There is one God and one Father of us all, who is above all and through all and in all. From Ephesians 4, 4 through 6. I invite you to take these thoughts deeper with me as we move forward into a time of contemplation and meditation. Please relax, enjoy the beautiful music, and listen to my voice as we gently and lovingly let go of any judgments. They don't belong here. As we gather in love of all mankind, let us celebrate our oneness and release our judgments. Breathing in love, holding our ability to see the Christ 
in each and every living being. Let that ability move through you as you are aware of your breath, of your breathing. We are one. God lives in us all. We are divinely created, perfect just as we are. Let us embrace that oneness. Let us stand in the vision of oneness for all mankind. Let that peace begin here, begin now. We are peace. We are one. I invite you to bring that awareness, that knowing, forward into this moment to hold it and create it in each moment as our attention returns to the here and now. We are safe. We are one. Open your eyes. Stretch. Become aware. Give thanks. And let love be your guiding star. And so it is. Will you join me in prayer? We give thanks to you, Mother, Father, God, for your presence in our lives and in this moment that we open our hearts and our minds to the good that is coming forward, that we allow your truth to change our world, change our understanding, allow your good to flow through our lives in all ways. We claim this here and now in the name and in the nature of the Christ Spirit in which we all share. Amen. And so the story goes that there was a simple person that appeared at the pearly gate seeking admission. And the gatekeeper said there was a test that had to be passed before one would continue to paradise. And the test consisted of three questions. So the simple person said, go ahead, ask the questions. Okay, said the angel, for the first question, tell me which two days of the week begin with the letter T? That's easy, said the candidate for admission, today and tomorrow. Hmm, said the angel, well, I can't argue with that. Now for the second question, tell me how many seconds there are in a year. Well, the simpleton said, there are 12. 12! explained the angel. How do you figure that? Well, there's January 2nd, February 2nd, March 2nd. Oh, okay, the angel mused. Well, for the third question, tell me, what is God's first name? And without hesitation, the candidate said, God's first name is Andy. Oh, what makes you say that? Asked the angel. And the candidate replied, it's right there in the song. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. Oh, well, <laughs> it was a stretch, wasn't it? And it's one of my favorite songs. Dear ones, as a former hospice chaplain, I had many opportunities to participate in conversations with patients about their purpose in life. 
And I was struck that many patients expressed that their life was of little importance or con consequence to the world. And I realized in those moments that I was dealing with older generation and oftentimes a different culture as many of my patients in Honolulu were of Asian descent. And perhaps they were the first generation in their family to be born in the United States. And culturally, Asians place more attention on their family and not on themselves as individuals. But when we would review their lives, the major events and their work and their interests and their relationships and their experiences, we would piece together a full life with many important contributions to their world. Today, we're exploring our relationship to life and how we claim justice and the story we tell about ourselves. And we can begin with the originator of all life, God. We talk about God as our source and force of life last week, and I often affirm this statement there is one presence and power active in the universe and in my life, God the good, omnipotent. And many times when we tap into this principle of, of truth, we understand it in the abstract form. We think of it as God that is at work outside ourselves. After all, we pray to God, we affirm God in our lives, and we affirm the power of God working through us but it takes a lot for us to build up to an understanding of God as us, which is our second unity principle. We are divine spiritual beings created in God's image. Our essence is of God. We are divine spiritual beings created in God's image. Our essence is of God. I remember the first time I heard this truth principle, I was very excited. This statement that I, I, me, I am a divine spiritual being was new. And like some of you, I've been taught in the tradition that we were raised, that we were sinners. In fact, we were told that everyone born in our species fell under the spell of original sin, which was the first sin recorded in the book of Genesis when Eve bit into that fruit of the a tree of knowledge of good and evil. Well, then Adam had some, and they were banished from their paradise of Eden. It was the beginning of the saga we now know as the Holy Bible. And in the tradition, many of us were raised that the only way to escape the wrath of God's curse, this original sin, was redemption through our faith. So our principle stating that my divinity, your divinity, um, that we were divine first, that where our divinity comes first, was revolutionary. Our essence is of God, and that's an extraordinary understanding. We change paradigms from original sin to original blessing. And this understanding was the seeds of truth that I needed to hear, because up until that point, I was living with the condition that I was unworthy who and what I was in the world was based in sin and shame and self-hatred and anger and judgment. I was conditioned to believe these things because I believed much of my world supported this pattern of thinking, feeling, and acting. The world really didn't support this. No one wanted me to live in this version of hell, but my limited understanding at that time produced a world that reflected these thoughts, feelings, and actions. As true students, we know the world we create in um, is our beliefs, is, it, is the world that we manifest. In other words, if we believe it, we create it, it manifests in the physical realm. If we think we're being persecuted, we will create a world of persecution. If we think that we feel love, we manifest a world of love. Therefore, the principle that affirms our divinity and spiritual image of God is essential to our understanding of self-love and self-esteem. About self-love, Revealing Word says, self-love is care for one's own happiness and well-being. And this care is entirely compatible with justice, generosity, and the love for others. 
And I want to repeat that. Self-love is care for one's own happiness and well-being. This care is entirely compatible with justice, generosity, and the love for others. And I read this to mean that it is through the care of our own happiness and well-being that we also care about the justice, generosity, and love for others. We care for ourselves and we care for others. Jesus said it like this, love your neighbor as yourself. But I question, do we have the same regard for our neighbor as we have for ourselves? Sometimes we hold judgments against our neighbors because of perceived differences. I know in my life, I've been frightened by transients or people who appeared threatening and, and I wasn't very loving towards them. I found myself judging them and falling into a conditioned response that fostered insecurity. But when I look at my responses towards others that frightened me, I can see that I can be judgmental, critical, and harsh on myself, too. In other words, the universe is responding to my fears and conditions with a mirror that reflects my experiences. If I'm experiencing anger, the universe responds with situations I'm angry about. If I experience fear, the universe responds with fear-filled experiences. Likewise, in truth, we know that when we experience prosperity, the world, the universe responds with abundance in our thoughts, feelings, actions, and manifestations. And when we feel love and joy, the universe responds appropriately affirming this experience over and over again. Much of our experiences are attuned to an energetic frequency. Now, frequency is the number of occurrences of a repeating event per a unit of time. Things like light and sound and radio and cell phones and Uh, TVs with antennas, they're all based on frequencies. And it's been said that the universe doesn't speak our languages, it speaks frequencies. It speaks our energetic frequencies. So what energy do we project? If we project love and peace and joy energetically, the universe responds with a world filled of love, peace, and joy. Likewise, if I project fear, doubt, or pain, the universe responds with a world filled with fear, doubt, and pain. And isn't it interesting that the pain that one person projects is met by the pain another person experiences over something completely different? It's just that pain will meet pain, just as love will meet love and healing will meet healing. This weekend, we honor the life and the legacy of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. as he held a mirror that showed the pain that African Americans experienced as a result of systemic racism. And it was met by the pain of those who didn't want the the system to change. It was a convergence of pain for all who participated in the experience. There was pain on both sides. And the experience continues for many people. Dr. King held up a mirror and many times it was burdensome, but he also held on to the belief that a new order would be established in the world that would not be based on the color of skin or cultural heritage, but rather on the universal truth principle of oneness. In unity, we teach we are one with God because we are all of the same nature as God, namely spirit. We are created in God's image and after God's likeness. We are one with each other because we are the same spirit of God. God's image is inherent in each of us as our own divine nature. Oneness is much like our second principle. We see we share the same nature with the source and the force of God of the universe. Dr. King understood the metaphysics of oneness. 
We are of the same nature of God. Each of us, everyone on the planet, despite race or cultural identity. Yet, as true students, we know that much of the human experience we are here to overcome is this illusion of separateness. Meister Eckhart, the great Christian mystic, said, if God is all existence, it is impossible to exist apart from God. Think of that. If God is all existence, it is impossible to exist apart from God. So all things are themselves God or an aspect of God. Whatever else they appear in our space-time is only an appearance. Dr. King understood the importance of self-love as it related to our oneness. When we love ourselves, truly love ourselves, we can then truly love others. And we want everyone to be elevated. We desire to see every being as sister and brother, prince and princess, valued and adored. We celebrate the purpose of all creatures, great and small. We marvel in the wonders of a natural world. We give and receive freely in the communion with God. In other words, we bring the kingdom of God into manifest. So what story do we tell ourselves and others about our true nature? Do we elevate ourselves as God's creation, an emanation of divinity? Do we claim our place and power in life? Do we affirm that like God, we are beings of love and light? Do we proclaim divinity for all of our sisters and brothers? This is the journey of our spiritual being in a human experience going past the appearance of separation and embracing our oneness with the universal source and force. We bow to Jesus Christ who brought this awareness into manifestation and we give thanks to the many prophets like Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. for holding up the mirror to reflect light onto our paths. Today, We celebrate our oneness and we affirm justice, divine justice for all. Amen. Oh, let us turn our thoughts today to Martin Luther King. And recognize that there are ties between us. All men and women living on the earth. Ties of hope and love, sister and brotherhood. And we are bound together in our desire to see the world become a place in which our children can grow free and strong. We are bound together by the task that stands before us and the road that lies ahead we are bound and we are bound there is a feeling like the clenching of a fist there is a hunger in the center of the chest There is a passage through the darkness and the mist And though the body sleeps, the heart will never rest Shed a little light, O Lord, shed a little light, O Lord So that we can see 
just a little light, oh Lord, just a little light, oh Lord. Want to stand it on up, stand it on up, oh Lord. Stand on up. I want to walk it on down, want to shed a little light, oh Lord. Can't get no light from a dollar bill. Don't get no light from the TV screen When I open my eyes I want to drink my fill From the well on the hill well, Do you know what I mean? Shed a little light, oh Lord Shed a little light, oh Lord So that we can see just a little light, oh Lord, just a little light, oh Lord. Want to stand it on up, stand it on up, oh Lord, stand on up. Want to walk it on down, want to shed a little light, oh Lord. Shed a little light, oh is a feeling like the clenching of a fist there is a hunger in the center of the chest oh yes there is a passage through the darkness and the mist and though the body sleeps the heart will never rest Oh, let us turn our thoughts today to Martin Luther King and recognize that there are ties between us. All men and women living on the earth, ties of hope and love sister and brother who wow thank you jody that was really amazing it is time for our prosperity blessing we want to honor and celebrate all of the many ways that you give and serve our world, that we give and serve our world at home, in our families, in our com community, in our prayers. We celebrate the ways that we serve God through this ministry. Please take your love offering, hold it, and repeat with me. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. We claim God's power in your tithes and offerings today. Thank you for your support. We love you, and you are important to us. Whenever you have a prayer need, please call us, and we'll have a chaplain return the call to you as soon as possible. We also encourage you to call Silent Unity. They're open 365 days a year, waiting to serve you in prayer. If you would like to receive regular phone calls from our telephone ministry, or you want to receive our daily emails with video links and you aren't getting those, please contact our office. Give us a call. We're at 619-579-9586. We wish to thank all of the wonderful souls involved in our video ministry. It takes a lot of hands and hours to write, produce, and edit our videos. We are grateful for each person who participates, and especially thank you 
for viewing, commenting, liking, and sharing. We would like to give a thank you to Phil and Becky Rokel, Linda and Bob Burdett, that's me, Jody Bagley, sorry, Patricia Santos, Judy Gaudet, Kathy Richmond, Nancy Sogalusi, Pastor Robert, Frankie, and Samantha Thompson. I told you it takes a lot to put these videos together. And now we would like to enjoy the peace song with Jody. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be, with God as creator, family all are we. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. with me let this be the moment now with every step i take let this be my joyous vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally Please join me for the prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Dear ones, we thank you for joining us today. We thank you for your love, your prayers, your financial support. We love you, we miss you, we behold the Christ in you, and we look forward to that day when we can all be sitting in church together, praising God, singing, and giving each other hugs. Much love to you. Bye-bye. joining us and let's stay connected and grow in spirit we are on facebook search for unity church of el cajon and follow us and like our posts you can reach us on youtube at unity church of el cajon please subscribe to our channel watch our videos and leave comments which can help us improve we are on the web at unity of el cajon.org Email or call our church office to receive our weekly newsletters, which lists all of our activities and opportunities to learn and grow together. Mm -hmm.